Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Praise, and you are watching Praise TV, where we discuss all things Protoss as it relates to my favorite game, StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Now, I'm excited for two reasons today. One, because this is the first video I've ever recorded, go easy on me, and two, because we are discussing one of my favorite topics, and that is StarCraft II Hotkeys. We're going to dive right into this subject with a question. Have you ever had a glitch moment in your gameplay where you had an idea, but you couldn't execute it fast and with accuracy? The key to addressing this issue all too often has to do with what we'll be talking about today, StarCraft II hotkeys. So there's a couple of different topics I want to browse through and break down. And as you can see on the right hand side, those topics will be the importance of hotkeys, pro theory surrounding hotkeys, the approach to hotkeys, and I will be showing you a hotkey chart to show you what I use, and hopefully that can be um, added into your own setup. We'll be discussing the learning curve associated with changing hotkeys, and then we'll recap through those topics. Now, meanwhile, a lot of times in this cast, I will be showing you guys a game in which I'm using hotkeys, uh, and you can kind of have something to look at while I talk through these so it's not dry and dull. So let's go ahead and dive right into it, guys. We're going to start this off with one of my games that I'm playing. I'm playing against a Terran, and I use quite a bit of hotkeys. So just go ahead and look at this as I'm explaining the concepts. So here are a few important reasons why hotkeys are essential in Legacy of the Void. One, the very broad umbrella reason is efficiency. When you set up hotkeys, the more hotkeys you set up that you can effectively apply in your gameplay, the more efficient you're going to play. You're going to be able to do more things, you're going to be able to think more creatively, and your overall gameplay will just speed up. It'll be like hitting overdrive, you know, going from moving sap on a tree to just being in a shuttle going at lightning speed through uh, this beautiful game. Another thing that is good about hotkeys is it eliminates brain lapses. You know, as we said in the question, have you ever had moments where you had a thought that you wanted to do inside of the game, but you couldn't quite execute it, either because there were too many tasks or because there were too many buttons you had to press to get to it and it wasn't familiar to you? Hotkeys eliminate the brain lapses and it eliminates the communication between what your brain wants to do and your body being able to execute it. It also creates more dynamic gameplay. If you have more tools in your belt, i.e. the hotkeys, you're able to execute more actions because you're doing things faster. So that opens up time for thinking and execution. Also, you might have brighter ideas. Um, the more opportunity and time you have to think about these things, the more creative your gameplay is going to get. You know, If you have more time to think about things, you can get a lot more broad range of strategy and concepts and ideas and also just more tasks in general to execute which will you know it'll be sending off so much information in the brain that there's always going to be room for new ideas also uh, this is kind of the hidden gem in StarCraft 2 and that's that when you have hotkeys and you're executing a bunch of tasks one of the hardest things in this game to do is recover from losses. See, the hidden variable is your opponent. Your opponent's trying to kill you, he's trying to raise up an army, and he's trying to do all the things that you're trying to do better than you. So if you have great hotkey setup, this allows you that whenever you take a loss or a hit, whether it be in your economy or harass or an army engagement, you can recover very quickly from those losses that you took and get yourself back into a position where you can go ahead of your opponent. This is absolutely critical in the game because some people have phenomenal gameplay, but they tend to break down and fall apart whenever they're harassed or attacked um, or um, something's dampered in their gameplay. So this is definitely essential. You can't get around it in any way possible. And it, in many cases, gives you an advantage above your opponent. Lastly, the Protoss race in general needs hotkeys. Almost every unit is a spellcaster. We got Charge, Blink, Force Field, Guardian Shield, uh, Stasis War, we got Graviton Beam, I think I already said Blink, we got the Disruptor Shots, we got um, Pulsar Beam. I mean, there's just so many spells for Protoss there's, I think there might be like one game, one unit in the game that that isn't a spellcaster. And so especially since Protoss relies on the synergy between all of the units, 
it's absolutely important that you can execute all these uh, spells or as many as possible uh, that you can because the more that you can execute the better you will be as a Protoss race. Now you don't need to execute all of these spells but you'll see very quickly in Legacy of the Void that the more spells you're able to cast the better off you are as Protoss. Defensively, aggressively, the whole nine. So the next uh, topic we're going to discuss is pro theory. And what I mean by this uh, is just a very kind of general way of saying what at the very high level, what do hotkeys look like for the pros? What might separate a B-level pro or a semi-pro from somebody at the very high level? Well, a lot of it is very simple. It has to do uh, largely with hotkeys. If you have a very dynamic hotkey setup and it is very well rehearsed, you can guarantee that players are going to be executing their strategies at a very high level. See, this game is made up of meta or thought and the physical aspect of it, which is your mechanics. And those mechanics are improved and optimized by a good hotkey setup. So when you look at somebody like Zest, for instance, they might uh, he might have a broad range of hotkeys and he's mastered them and memorized them to the point where whenever he has a strategy, he can focus almost the entire game on the strategy because his mechanics are dang near natural. And so the communication between what he wants to do in a game and how to execute what he wants to do are solid. There's no glitches going on at all. Whereas maybe a B-League player might be lopsided in their thinking where they have great mechanics and not necessarily great strategies. Or oftentimes, especially in the NA scene, you have players who have great strategies but very poor execution. So at the pro level, mechanics are being flushed out at a very high level. Now, some people might say, well, praise, there are some people out there with only three hotkeys. I've seen it on stream and at a tournament. Yes, this might be the case, but these are not the players that you want to mold your style around because they have, uh, you know, obviously memorized a certain way of playing that benefits them. But they, I can guarantee you in every case, their uh, skill level will be capped in a certain regard because they're not making full use of hotkeys. And so we don't ever want to just barely get by in StarCraft II. We want to have a progressive mindset where we are always getting better in skill and an efficient hotkey setup is always the way to go there. Next topic we're going to discuss is the approach to a good hotkey setup. Just had to get a drink of water there. When you're setting up your hotkeys, you usually want to have, generally, and this is with the Protoss race, but I think with other races as well, when we're setting up hotkeys, we want to kind of move everything to the top left. Okay, You don't really want to have a whole lot of wrist movement or arm to elbow, you know, forearm or elbow movement. You want to completely cut the distance between, you know, what you have. The, the most important thing is that you're pressing buttons on your keyboard. So if you have to swing your arm or your wrist, you're going to be less precise at pressing the buttons. So what I tend to like to do is set up a top left setup and I'm going to show you what that looks like in a little bit so that way you can have more finger movement than wrist and arm movement now if your hotkeys are all over the keyboard you might need to have a greater arm span uh, when it comes to pressing your hotkeys but if you don't have to do that why give yourself the stress of having to make more precise button presses because you have to move your arms just it doesn't quite register with me. Maybe somebody can argue a case for it. I just don't quite see it. So as you will see when we pull up our hotkey chart here, and I'm going to go ahead and pause the game, um, you will notice my hotkey setup, which is very cool. Um, forgive some of the language on it. It's from Wings of Liberty, but I assure you that um, I've improved this uh, list since then. I'll go ahead and update it at some point and put it uh, below in the comments section. But this just gives you a, a, a way to think through some of these concepts. I want you to notice a couple of things. One, I'm making use of hotkeys in my mouse. Um, two, all of my spells are on two buttons, E and R, and they're based off of a secondary and primary setup, where E executes all of my unit's primary spells, the most important ones, and R is the secondary spell. Well, praise, what happens if I have more than two spells with a unit? 
that's oftentimes the case in Legacy of the Void. Well, I just go ahead and press the the third or fourth spell wherever it, it normally was. Um, and you'll notice that the third and fourth spell of a lot of units, if they have them, are spells that you may only cast um, once or twice in game, and they're not as effective. They're, they're not uh, of much concern. Um, you might be asking another question like, well, praise, I see seven through zero hotkeyed. Uh, well, that's changed as of late, and I want you to know that there are a couple buttons on the left side of the keyboard that aren't made use of yet, and that's tilde, uh, caps locked, Q, W if you don't use the warp in for that, and spacebar. I've relocated all my harass hotkeys 7 through 0 to those buttons. So those are on the left hand side. Um, I try to prioritize. Um, micro based units on the top left like my tilde and my caps lock where something like a warp prism might be on space bar um, that way it you know it, it a warp prism functions differently in the game than my units so space bar seems more appropriate just visually for me also I made use of the base camera and idle workers now with base camera I highly recommend that you don't do that in Legacy of the Void because you used to have to make use of Chrono Boost so scrolling through the bases was extremely important for that now since the Chrono Boost goes unlimited I definitely recommend camera hotkeys of F1 through F4. You can still cycle through all your bases more appropriately, but you won't have to do that as often because Chrono Boost is constantly going. So once the game gets to a certain area, there's no longer really a need for continuing to scroll through bases unless you're putting up production and stuff like that, in which case the camera hotkeys are definitely more suitable for that. So... Um, what else do I need to cover on this? Oh, I do also want to make note of um, production hotkeys. Um, I don't have it on this chart, but typically I use a down diagonal format for making units. Uh, this is units that we're not warping in, so since my robotics facility is on 5, I'm going to make an immortal with R, or sorry, an immortal with T, a colossus with G, a disruptor with B, and on my stargate I'll make a phoenix with Y, a Void Ray with H, and a Tempest with N. I don't often use carriers. I'll just press C if I have to. It's no big deal. So that's another thing you want to consider is production structure uh, unit hotkeys uh, so that you're not pressing stuff all over the board. You want to kind of keep everything in one space. Um, I'd love to see your guys' hotkey setups. Send me a picture, comment in the comment section, and let's discuss this more. But this is a very good thing for me. Um, you know, my Colossus hotkey might now be a Disruptor hotkey, so I just wanted you to see the positioning of them and how I make use of them. I also wanted to do a selfless plug about the uh, Cooler Master Quickstorm Pro, because this brown switch keyboard is one of the most cost-efficient mechanical keyboards out there at a nice, comfortable 80 bucks. very sturdy, it lights up with LED lighting, and it's brown switch. How much more can you go well on that? So. One day I'm going to put out a video on equipment and accessories, but for now I just wanted to show you guys the hotkey setup. We're going to go ahead and go back to the game now as I discuss uh, our last topic, which is the learning curve. Now, um, when you set up your hotkeys, it will take some time to get used to. There's really no way around it. You might go to Bronze League. You might feel like just a, a sucky player overall if you've never really wrapped your head around an efficient hotkey setup. And I can tell you guys, for me, it took about a week to wrap my head around a good, solid hotkey setup. It took me about two or three days for it to just feel right. And then it took me another two or three days to execute it in-game flu fluidly. For others of you, it may go faster, it may go slower. But one of the biggest things I want to tell you guys is don't overwhelm yourself with a crazy setup, okay? It's completely fine to pre-plan all the hotkeys that you want to have, similar to that chart. You might make your own chart. But... When you're applying these uh, hotkeys, only work on about two to three at a time, okay? Be encouraging to yourself. Don't be discouraging. Slowly but surely add to your hotkey setup to what feels comfortable, and you'll notice that in a couple of weeks, you'll have a really, really, really good grasp of it 
It doesn't take that long at all. And guys, if you're below platinum or diamond, you will jump two leagues overnight once this stuff starts clicking. And for the masters or grandmasters players, it may be the difference between top masters or top grandmasters. It will if you haven't applied these concepts yet. Uh, a great hotkey setup will literally catapult your gameplay overnight because you'll double in speed, sometimes triple, depending on uh, how weak your hotkey setup has been in the past. And man, it is just the most rewarding feeling ever to play really fast StarCraft II efficiently. As you can see with my setup right now in this replay, I have a ton of hotkeys going on. I'm able to cycle through Phoenix, uh, you know, small contingency of stalkers, my main army, my robo, my stargate, and I have the camera hotkeys, and it looks good, man. When you, like I said, guys, it's like cheat mode when you finally start wrapping your head around some of this stuff. So, guys, set up hotkeys, and if you already have hotkeys, do them better. You know, make them more optimal. Let me know what you can do. My setup isn't perfect, but it's a light bulb moment in everyone's gameplay that is so necessary and so appropriate for such a complex, beautiful game. You're really shortchanging yourself if you think you can play this game at a high level or even in a fun way without making use of age old history with hotkeys. I mean, they've been around since Brood War. Pick them up, guys. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and recap here. Um, the importance of good hotkeys is efficiency overall. Eliminate brain lapses. It creates more dynamic gameplay. You have more tools, uh, which means you'll have better play, brighter ideas. You can recover from what your opponent does to you a lot quicker and adapt if you have a lot of hotkeys and you won't have brain glitches there, which is where your glitches will mostly happen. And Protoss Race in general needs a lot of hotkeys. We discussed the pro theory about what separates high-end players from maybe semi-pro players is that their hotkey setup is fluid and memorized, so they're able to focus completely on strategy and they're not hindered at all by... Um, a lack of muscle memory or um, mechanics. They, they can do that completely optimally and execute pure strategy in the game, and it's beautiful to watch. And you can always tell the difference at the pro level between an amateur and a pro. They're just able to execute more. You look at guys like Partying or Zest, they just always have more stuff. They're always in the right area. Their positioning and reactions are flawless, and it is phenomenal and encouraging to watch, especially for the Protoss race. We showed you guys my hotkey chart and what that looks like visually. We also showed you guys my in-game replay and what having a bunch of hotkeys can do for you uh, visually so you guys can actually see uh, the rewarding benefits of a hotkey setup. And then lastly, we talked about the learning curve, about how, yes, it is going to take time to learn, just like everything good. You know, you can't just instantly know how to use hotkeys well. You have to train yourself. You know, you have to build that natural ability to cycle through hotkeys. And uh, that learning curve is absolutely necessary in this game if you want to get better. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I may make a part two series to this because I, I tried to make the video short. I know watching YouTube tutorial based videos can be stressful if they're over 15 or 20 minutes. So write in the comments section if you'd like me to elaborate on any of these topics or build on it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will get better with these over time. And um, I'm super excited to be giving you guys uh, content on everything I've learned about StarCraft II in the past. I really think there's a lack of content in the Protoss race as a whole. There's not a lot of Protosses playing on the ladder, and it's just depressing, man. It's very depressing. It just seems like nowadays on the NA scene, all we can rely on is guys like M. Canning and Puck and Mana and Naniwa. And guys, we just need more kind of amateur level players jumping in and talking about StarCraft, get the hype going again. And that's the kind of stuff that motivates me to bring content into this game. But I'm going to carry the torch for you guys and share my wealth of knowledge. I'm a high-end Masters player hoping to strike gold and get Grandmaster one day. And uh, that's all I got to say, guys. Again, this is Praise with Praise TV. Hope you guys enjoyed our episode on hotkeys, and I am signing off. Peace.